Hey planty people, what's up? It's Devil Wing. Today I have my monster next to me and I'm going to do some care for it. I'm going to set it up with a new moth pole and do some stuff with the aerial roots. I'm trying to get it to push out a split leaf. It has gotten some really large leaves recently. It pushed out five new leaves. So spring is here. So hopefully doing this stuff for it will help it finally push out a split leaf through spring and summer, but we'll see. And uh, Hopefully you find some good tips in this that you can maybe use for your monster. But yeah, let's get going. So this plant is pretty large. I did recently up pot it. Ooh. I did recently up pot this plant, um, so I think that has helped it push out some new leaves. But if you can see down here, there's like four or five really long aerial roots. And I have seen people um, attach something to keep it moist at the end of the roots for it to just get more moisture from and more nutrients. So I have a giant bowl of sphagnum moss here that I'm going to use hopefully to help with the pole situation and the aerial roots. But I will try to give you guys a good view of like what I'm doing. So I'm doing a technique I've seen before. I don't remember who did this before me. What you do is you take clear plastic wrap and then just put like a ball of sphagnum moss in it. And then you attach it just to the ends of the roots, uh, keeping it moist. And I'm just gonna use these like zip tie things that I have. But yeah, pretty simple. I have been hesitant to do this before because, I don't know, I just felt like the roots would maybe rot, but people told me that wouldn't happen, so I guess I'll just test it out, and if it doesn't work, then I will just cut off the roots, but I have my top strap, and I did wet this moss a little bit ago. I'll go through this area right here. <laughs> it is gonna look kind of funny, I think, but if this works, I'm gonna be so excited. Every time there's a new leaf on this plant, I just watch it like every single day. And I don't think it's a light situation because on this plant, or where this plant is, it is getting a lot of direct and bright and direct light for like eight hours. So I feel like that should be enough for this guy. <laughs> but yeah, it's gonna take a little bit more. I don't know a lot about Monsteras. Um, I only have two. I only have this, my Deliciosa, and then um, my Adansonii, which if this helps, I'm going to do the same thing to my Adansonii, at least for the pole. But yeah, there's one. So I'm just going to do this to the other roots. I might try to make them a little bit smaller, but then I'll try and keep it um, wet by just sticking like a pipette in there with water. Um, and hopefully this helps. But I think I'm just gonna actually leave it with these three and see how this does. Yeah. So now I am going to detach the pole and then try and work on that and show you guys what I'm going to do with that. Okay. 
<laughs> so I have one of those like coca coir poles that um, are extendable. What I'm thinking is I'm just going to cut all of the coco coir off because it doesn't hold any moisture and I've never had a plant actually root into the coco coir but it does have like a self watering hole which is really nice um, and I don't want to just throw these out so I'm going to try to uh, make them something new. <laughs> Get some scissors. And I'm probably going to speed up through a lot of this just because I'm kind of experimenting. Um, so I will just let you know when I figure out what exactly I'm going to do. I am also going to try and save the coco coir for something else, probably, hopefully. I might need more moss than what I have, too. I'll have to see. And I'll probably just leave that on. I don't really know how I get that off, and it doesn't seem too worth it. Um, just a little bit. Let me just get the other one free. And if this helps, I'll probably stake a lot more of my <laughs> plants too and give them something to climb. So now this is going to be the tricky part, but I'll see how this does. It might be a total fail, um, but I'm just going to use this to kind of mold it around, to mold the moss around the pole. But they both just look like this. I kind of wonder why there aren't more holes in the pole to make it more like self-watering, but whatever. So my plan is kind of to make this like a sushi roll and then <laughs> use like just a bunch of this and some extra twine I have and stuff to try and attach it well enough um, so there isn't moss like all over my floor. But if it doesn't look great, that's okay by me. Um, I think as the plant grows, uh, you won't really notice it as much. And I also honestly might end up just using this for a different plant in the future. We'll see. I really want um, sphagnum moss that's like alive. I don't know if any of you guys have watched Benji plant, um, Benji plants, but he has a type of moss that he gets that's imported from like New Zealand or something and it will actually sprout and it just looks really cool. Um, it makes everything look like it's actually like growing in grass or something, or actually like a little ecosystem, which is really cool, I think. So I'm just gonna prep a lot of these. I'm not really a fan of this stuff. They're like the twist ties you get at the grocery store for like fruit, um, but I got it for free. So I'm just kind of using what I have. But if this works though, I might have to do a Monstera haul because there are a lot of other Monsteras I would love to have. Um, but I only have two and they're doing okay, but they're not like amazing. So I will see if what I'm doing here helps them. <laughs> so I'm kind of tempted to wrap it with these first and then remove the plastic underneath as best as I can to hold the shape more. Like I said, I haven't actually done this before. This was just a thought that's been like in my head for weeks now that I wanted to try just because I have this stuff. I didn't really, I don't really have the money to like just buy a new pole. And I have seen people make their own poles before, not like this, um, <laughs> but I've seen them use like that plastic uh, mesh, it's kind of like chicken wire, you get it at, like Lowe's and Home Depot, I don't know what it's actually called, but there are better videos than what I'm making about this right now. <laughs> and then at the very end I'll cut off some of the extra plastic. Okay. 
So now I'm at this stage. <laughs> They're all pretty tied on. Um, so now I'm gonna try to slowly remove the plastic as I tie more. And hopefully that holds together pretty well. If not, I am refilming this when I come up with a better idea. <laughs> So I just ended up adding a few more zip ties actually before I start cutting off the plastic. So I just wrapped it even more just to make sure it stays pretty secure. Now I'm just going to remove the plastic wrap as best as I can. Seems like it's working right now. Yes, there is probably a prettier way of doing this. This is more of a functional thing for me right now. I just think about using um, some string on this to make it look nicer, but I felt like that could possibly rot. Ooh, I do have a kind of like sad but cool update. My alopecia poly went dormant on me, but, um, well, so I dug up the uh, bulb. I'm drying it out right now so I can replant it. So when I dug it up, I found like seven corms. So that'll be really cool. I'm gonna try and make a video um, and update you guys on the corms. I haven't done anything with them yet, but I'm planning to at the end of this week. But yeah, very exciting. I've never uh, grown an alocasia from bulb before. So, maybe I'll have a lot of little alocasia babies. You know what, it's holding together. So even though it doesn't look great right now, I am pretty happy with it. This is a tutorial on how to make the ugliest moss pole in the world. I feel like that's thick enough, right? Like, that's about what it looked like before with the Coco Coir. Mayday. I mean, it worked. It worked well enough for me. So I'm going to try and clean this up and make it look less atrocious. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other pole. And I'll probably just cut back in when I'm done with that because that was kind of painstaking. Um, yeah. <laughs> So I will be back in a little bit um, and I'll show you what they look like connected. Okay, so I just finished the second one and this is how it looks. You know, it's not terrible. It's definitely like top heavy. I made the second one thicker for some reason. But now I am going to um, put it back in the pot with my Monstera and then I'll give you guys a final clip of where I put it in the house. And then I will just keep you guys updated over the next couple weeks of how this works. I don't know if this will be that useful to a lot of people, but uh, I knew that I had moss, I had old poles, I didn't want to spend any money. So this is what I came up with, and it's still self-watering, which is uh, pretty nice. So this is where my Monstera lives. It's by my front window. Um, and if you can see, it gets a lot of light through here during like the sunset, and it also gets a bunch of indirect light just from the shade. I usually don't pull it up all the way. But this is what the pole looks like not too bad um yeah hopefully this just helps her get more support hey guys that's the end of this video i hope you found some of it helpful at least um if you like this video please make sure to like it and subscribe to see more planty content um, and if you want to see more updates of my plants and just what's going on, I do have an Instagram that's uh, Devil Wing Begonia. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great day um, and wish me luck with this plant. <laughs> see you guys. Bye.